Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Lit RPG Podcast. I am Ramon Mejia. I'm here to bring you the latest Lit RPG news reviews and of course author interviews. Uh, this is episode number 176 of the show. Uh, this week I have four new reviews for you folks at home and that includes The Scared But Willing. Also, uh, Steel Orc Player Reborn, a Lit RPG adventure. Out of that will be Villainous Life, a Lit RPG supervillain novel. Then it'll be 8-Bit Bastards, level 1. So all kinds of variety of stories for you this week. Uh, before we get into that, we're going to, of course, Lit RPG News. And in Lit RPG News, we have uh, just a couple stories here. Um, Luke Chimlenko, author of The Ascend Online, actually released some really nice uh, commissioned artwork for his characters. We actually have two different pieces from him this week, including the characters Molly, which is on the screen now, and Lazarus. Um, personally, I think Molly is a <laughs> is a better character, but, you know, who am I to say? Uh, they're both very good, uh, interesting artworks. And I, I really like that Luke um, does this kind of stuff for his fans and for his Patreon supporters, and just it's just kind of fun. A little neat little extra thing. Uh, also, in Little Pigeon News, we have the Gameless Society fan page uh, doing a written interview for the author of uh, Wandering In, uh, Pirate Abba. So, definitely something to go check out. It's nice and brief. Um, but again, just a few questions, nice written interview. We'll have a link in the show notes if you want to go check that out. Um, on to stuff that is out now, stuff that's come out recently I, that I haven't had a chance to read. That includes Waken Online Unity. This is a side story uh, quest for a side quest rather for Frank, that particular character. Um, the reviews that have come in so far have been really encouraging, saying that uh, this is a good Frank centric story and that they appreciate the character more. So definitely go check it out if you're a fan of Awaken Online. Um, we also have out Vines of Ostara, a game of RPG adventure. Um, Kazaran Online, Cerulean Server, book number one. I don't really know much about this, to be honest, but I did look and see that it had notifications and levels and whatnot, so it is out. Uh, also out right now is City of Freedom, Adam Online, book number two, a little bit series. Uh, this was that cyberpunkish one from the co-author of the Level Up series, of a Level Up side series. Um, Max Lagno, so um, it is there. Um, I enjoyed book number one. Um, I thought it was neat. Not everybody did, though, uh, but still, I enjoyed it. Um, I'm definitely planning to read it. Also out is Din, uh, Jin Tamer, uh, Evolution, a monster battling game of adventure, uh, Bronze League book number three. So this is the third book in this particular series. Uh, it is out now. Also out is Heist Online um, by Victor Deckard. And Heaven's Gate, volume number one, a little bit of adventure. Um, this looks like some pre-made cover art, so I'm a little iffy about what this actually is going to be, but um, it has stats and levels and stuff, so I'll uh, uh, give it a chance. Uh, but, yeah. Um, also out is Lord of Creation, the Universal Struggle, book number one. Um, not so many great reviews so far on this one. Just as of this recording, it had one review, uh, three-star rating out of Amazon. Uh, Apparently there were some, according to the reviewer, some um, technical writing issues, um, but I'll let you know more about it if I end up reading it and reviewing it. Also out is Second Skin Pieces, the second book in the Second Skin series. Uh, that is out for folks who enjoy that novel series. Um, but for me, the uh, bigger interest is definitely the one by Outsman Foster. It's called The Crafter, book number one, Legacy. Um, Outspun Foster has done some really um, creative and interesting little works, including like the Slime series um, and some other stuff. I actually also did a, a piece with uh, Blaze Corvin um, with a bardish reverse back in time thing going on, which I really enjoyed. Um, and this is something that revolves around crafting, apparently. I'm super enthusiastic to read this one in particular. Um, so there you go, all stuff that is out now. Uh, onto new Little RPG audiobooks. There are just a couple this week. Uh, Camelot Overthrown, a Arthurian Little RPG. Uh, Camelot Little RPG um, is out as an audiobook. Uh, that's by Galen Wolf, if I'm not mistaken. It doesn't say on the cover art, um, but it's that's, but that's the same series. Um, Caravans and Creatures, volume number one, books one through four. Um, this has been out as a omnibus ebook for a while. Um, it is now out as an omnibus audiobook uh that's i i think i remember looking on the audible thing it says there's like something like 32 hours <laughs> of content here between the four books as an audiobook so that's that's an amazing value especially considering um i think you're still spending just the one um credit for it so that's that's a huge if you haven't listened to the series if you haven't read it i would super encourage you to do so this is a really fun um 
humorous series. It is a very potty mouth, um, sexual window guys, just like being kind of mean worded, but in an entertaining buddy kind of way. That's kind of the story. It's, it's um, trapped in a RPG tabletop game <laughs> world thing going on here. Um, but like I said, super funny, just a particular kind of humor, very potty humor, lots of cursing, lots of, uh, penis jokes that kind of stuff so if that's not for you don't read it but if you enjoy that kind of humor uh, that kevin smith kind of humor um i think you'll really like this i, I know i do um also upcoming let pretty next we have stuff that's coming out in the near future this is just me reading off stuff off a list uh but we do have some new entries on the list so here we go june 22nd kingdom come uh the arkemia online chronicles book number three june 25th shift book number two um, June 27th, this is new to the list, The Crafter's Dungeon, a Dungeon Core novel, Dungeon Crafting book number one. Jonathan Brooks has actually been writing up quite a few dungeon novels. I think that he's, he, he's finding his little um, niche um, and he's trying to do different kinds of Dungeon Core novels. And this one is just going to be crafting um, centric. So we'll see how that turns out. I like some of his other stuff though. Um, sometime in June, um, A by A.R. Chen is The Ball of Light Evolution. Remember this one is being produced by Blaze Corbin's uh, publishing company. On July the 18th, it'll be the Time Master. On July the 23rd, Cannibal, Demon of the Wind, uh, sorry, Demon of the Mind, rather, a post-apocalyptic survival liturgy. Uh, this one's new to the list. July 31st, it'll be Imprisoned Online, Gaming the System. Um, sometime in July, um, Nora Hazard, book number three, Accounts Payable. Um, according to Blaze Corvin's uh, Facebook blog uh he's actually just finished the first draft of the story he's super excited that it's done and it completes a series for him i don't know if it's finished editing or not though but it should be out according in july sometime so i'm assuming there's going to be some editing time um involved in this as well but it's good to know that uh he's he's finished with the, the draft of this also out on august 5th is hero go champion is playing book number three august the 8th it'll be invasion book number one a second chance um, August the 15th, it'll be Scal Scaps and Scamps and Scoundrels, a Liberty Game of Adventure, The Bad Guys book number one, written by Eric Ugland, who's the author of the Good Guy series, which I'm a super big fan of. Um, out on uh, August the 31st, it'll be Zones of Alacria, <laughs> The Dragon Gate. Um, sometime in August, from Blaze Corbin, Outspan Foster, it's going to be the second song in the first song series the second book in the first song series which sounds weird um you know say it's the second book in the anthem of infinity series i guess um out on september the second will be world of Karak, a game of villains and then september the 9th it'll be blood of fate world 99 book number one written by uh dan circlenoff who's the author of uh another series we did recently the something 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 Sorry, I actually like Dan. We actually didn't agree with Dan to start off not that long ago. He's a funny guy. Um, there you go. That's stuff that's coming out in the future. On to new releases and reviews. Okay, new releases and reviews. We're going to begin with the, sa uh, sorry, the Scared But Willing by R.W. Capron. I'm probably not saying that right, but it's... Uh, that's how it looks. Uh, this is 259 pages. It is $2.99, priced beautifully. Um, it is available on Kindle Unlimited, and here's the author's description. A new literary novel from the author of the Dream Trilogy. This scared but willing tells the tale of gamers drafted into a deadly electronic war. As a slog through the boredom of a career as a cubicle drone, Thomas Payne Cooper believed his life sucked. But it was not until the E-11 Corporation entered his life that he discovered what life scale suckage really meant the e11 corporation's meteor meteoric rise to become a multi-billion dollar technology giant was secretly based upon the alien ai reverse engineering advanced technology until the human computer and data network reached a point where the ai could hope to escape its bounds and e11 found itself in desperate straits human produced software could not contain the ai's efforts to break free without real-time human controls but the human psyche cannot handle a purely electronic environment. In desperation, E11 built an interface that allowed humans, their bodies in scone and nutrient tanks, to experience a virtual reality environment similar to a fantasy world MMO, except that the players only have a 2% chance of physically surviving the shock of dying in-game. 
Under the guise of employment opportunities, E11 is press ganging gamers into a virtual war designed to contain the homicidal AI. The interface feels real to the players, and death is certainly a fact. And the players' only hope is to return to their bodies to the real world is to play to win. The scared but willing are gamers who band together to hunt hunt their ticket home. A thoughtful ranger, a Monty Python living wizard, a brooding barbarian, a lovely healer, a vulgar monk, and a rogue who lives for food and women. Bound together by the challenge of fighting their way back to the real world, they embark on the journey of their lives, learning a great deal about themselves as they struggle to escape. So there we go. Um, a little bit of a wordy introduction, and honestly, that, in that, that entire section of the, the novel beginning is... Um, it's like the first 15, 20% of this novel. Um, and then it gets to the good stuff, at least for me. Um, so the actual review is here. The, uh, even the novel's author refers to the fact that he's probably best known in the Liberty community and gambling community for his novel series trilogy, The Dream Trilogy. It's a, it's a, one of the best received Liberty stories that has um, a group military transported to a game world series where like essentially a group of uh, military friends and veterans um, are sent to this, you know, fantasy S worlds. Um, and they have particular objectives and they have objectives to help family or to, to do other things before they can go home. And it's very transported to a, a game world kind of thing. Um, but the thing, the big highlights of that series to me, at least have been the military aspect, like all the military vets I know who've read this have really liked him. They're like, Oh yeah, that's spot on that. This guy, this the author has military background. And then the other big highlight for that series is the um, group dynamics between the four military buddies that, that comes across very well. Um, in addition to the action adventure stuff. Um, and, I really enjoyed the dream series. This one I didn't like quite as much, but it still pulls in some of the things that I liked about that series. It's just not everything. Um, I, I just couldn't help compare the two. Um, in some ways, this series, the uh, six scared rebelling is more blatantly lit RPG, um, which I thought was good. Unfortunately, in the story mixes several conflicting themes early on that may put off some readers. And I'll talk about them in a second. Um, honestly, I kind of had to push past the first 15% of the novel because of this. And again, a lot of that is that what's talked about in the novel description is stretched out, uh, for a very long time in the first 15% of the story. And it takes a little bit to get through. Um, first let's talk about the good things I enjoyed about this novel. Um, the, again, the dream trilogy, Big highlights for that one. Military action and banter between friends and squad mates. Okay, some of that exists here. Um, there's good action. And once past the 15% of the story, um, there's some really good group fights and nifty strategies to get through some some difficult encounters. Um, and the ban there is banter in here within the group dynamic, except that it, it's not as intimate. It's a little more superficial than it was in the dream series because the dream series had four friends who had gone through some terrible things together and some wars and fighting. And so when they were transported to like fantasy worlds or, or whatever kind of game worlds, well, they already had that dynamic there that came across very nicely. Um, in this particular novel, um, the group that eventually develops is essentially a pickup group. Um, strangers who just happen to be in the situation they'd never really worked together before and so it takes a little longer for them to build that dynamic where they have free mentorship eventually kind of happens but it's never quite the same as it is in the dream series and the dream trilogy um but again the banter is it, it does exist um there are more open rpg mechanics in the story which again i liked with references to stats experience points levels hp hp class skills all the good stuff all that is a little more open than it was in the dream trilogy um, and I enjoyed that particular aspect. I'm always a big fan of like crunchy numbers and like seeing stats and stuff. It makes me, makes the game aspect come through a little better for me. Um, the mess stuff, nothing really about the story is bad. There are a few aspects that I thought were a little challenging and maybe a little, not that amazing. Um, mostly in the early part of the novel. Um, there are a couple of themes and setup points in the story that I feel don't resonate well. Um, and or even conflicting in some respects. The premise of the novel essentially is that the main character is basically kidnapped by a tank company and his mind is uploaded to an MMO style um, fantasy game uh, to fight against uh, the company's AI, which has slowly become sentient. The main character isn't alone. There are a lot of other people in the same situation. Um, the game part is supposed to be this cyberpunk interface that only interprets this real cyber war that's happening and just happens to pre present it 
to the players as a fantasy game in which they fight monsters and accomplish other objectives that that uh, in reality protect vital cyber systems. Um, and I'm honestly, I, I don't like that. I don't like this particular part of the story. Um, at least how it's kind of feels like it's forced on you in the beginning sections of the story. Eventually, I'll, I'll later on, again, after that 15% win, it becomes a little less more of a background thing. And I think that's okay. I was okay with that at that point. Um, but in the first 15%, it's like repeatedly kind of forced in your face. Like, Oh no, no, this isn't a fantasy MMO. This is really just like the community face. And no, these aren't really monsters. They're, they're viruses or something um, from the AI and you're, and you killing them is really protecting this real intricate system. And all the NPCs are really like the subsystems for like, okay. So like the cartoon reboot, except, with like this fantasy overlay that's really not supposed to be seen or something. And it was like, it, it just really conflicted with like the immersion into like the fantasy setting, which is again, something else is part of the story. Like there's, there's a whole fantasy game element here that, um, feels like it conflicts with that cyberpunk thing going on. Um, cause the fantasy stuff is, it feels like it leans a little more towards transported to, um, a, a game world again, um, kind of like the Dream Trilogy was, except that it has more RPG mechanics. But the RPG mechanics, even though they're shown in the story, they're they're a little hit annoying. The fact that you don't see game notifications, you don't see like stat sheets, you don't see um, like skill descriptions or like notifications that talk about oh like leveling power abilities or anything like that. There are no notifications in the story. Instead, everything's a little more muted in that the the players have these stones that they have like can wear around the wrist and it sh whenever they look at it, they show so their HP, their level, their experience points, all the good stuff. Um, and that's kind of the way that they're interacting with it. And besides just kind of magically knowing their skills and magically knowing, you know, their ability possibilities. Um, but again, that's, it's a little more muted. So this, this again does lean a little more towards, um, minimalized game mechanics, but they're, they're, they're more game mechanics in the dream trilogy. Um, and that's going to be really good for some people. I, I didn't mind it. Uh, it didn't interfere with the with the with the storyline and the the objectives and the common in the, in, in, the, in the novel. Um, so there, good stuff or kind of mesh stuff. Uh, I, I personally love more game mechanics, but I think this one did more than the June trilogy. So that's good to me. May not be as much um, obvious RPG mechanics as some other people will enjoy though. Um, game mechanic thing wise again already kind of mentioned this it's kind of a mixed bag um there are rpg mechanics that are just a little bit muted I mentioned it already um overall though i like the story um i did have to push through the first 15 percent again um once i did the story was actually good um up until like the 15 percent, i was like oh this really isn't working for me i'm not a big fan of this cyberpunk thing this i'm being reminded of like every single paragraph um but after their first like not their first, but like almost their second big encounter, it becomes a little, the, the flow becomes better. It focuses more on like the fantasy adventuring aspect, the game, the, the group combat dynamics, the strategy of, of, of it and, and accomplishing these goals. And that becomes more of a, a bigger part of the story. There's, there's still like on the, on the back end, um, the goals of like, Oh, capturing these specific objectives to, to, earn your way out of the game or like killing or getting experience points to kill enough monsters or to get enough ice to like, you know, get your way to the game. But that's really like this, like more minimalized portion of the story. Um, and I'm, and I was okay with that at that point. Um, again, good group banter. Um, again, I didn't like it as quite as much as the dream trilogy. Um, but that's just, that's just me. Other people might like this one better. You never know, but I said it, it's not bad. It's enjoyable. I had a good time with it. Um, Again, the military stuff isn't here. Group relationships aren't quite as fun, but if you like your load RPG with lighter game mechanics and good combat, I think you'll still enjoy this. For me, it gets a score of 7.2 out of 10. Uh, the scared but willing gets a score again of a 7.2 out of 10. And next we have Steel Orc, Player Reborn, a load RPG adventure by Dick Davis. It is 564 pages, $2.99, which is a really good deal. Um, it is also available on Kindle Limited. Here's the author's description. When Trip Keaton wakes up, he discovers that he's an orc, an orc in a strange world with the skeletons of humongous beasts scattered around him. This isn't a normal morning. Deep in the world of an online gaming, uh, Trip finds himself alone, weaponless, and with nobody to call a friend. Worse, the game's godlike controller has taken an interest in him, and that interest manifests itself in cruel ways. If he is to survive, 
he has to learn how to craft legendary weapons and find allies to fight with him. He must battle his way through a labyrinth of monsters and traps while surviving wave upon wave of creatures unleashed in the land of, of Godin's Reach. It isn't enough to make a sword. When the metal cools, he must learn how to weave magic into it. So there we go. Um, I think that actually does a really decent job of describing the main points of the story. Um, and emphasizing that this has a crafting emphasis. Um, the start of the story is a little bit confusing. Um, and it bounces around a lot until about the 15% mark. Uh, when the varying string threads merge together and make a little more sense. Still, it was kind of a hard start to the story for me. Um, at its core, this is a slice of life adventure story with an orc MC, main character rather, and some good crafting. There's a um, minor cyberpunk theme with the ruling AI becoming too broken and the game makers making a deal with it that impacts the main character. Um, but that storyline really comes more into play about after about the halfway point to the end of the story. Um, the big draw on this novel, the thing kind of separates it from others, is going to be the crafting focus in the middle of the story and the big game event at the end of the story that combines several neat story elements. Um, if you can make it past the beginning of the story, though, I think you're going to find something enjoyable. I don't want to ruin the storyline, um, but the game mechanics are, are fairly straightforward MMO stuff. I think the big thing getting is going to be crafting, the crafting in the middle of the story. And again, it takes a little while to get to. Um, is actually kind of nice. I actually personally really appreciated um, that emphasis on there. The I'm, I'm personally a kind of crafting, so that's probably why I liked this one uh, in particular. Um, but there's like nice detail. It's still a little gamified uh, and includes like enchanting and other like crafting related stuff in, in addition to like armoring and. and um, but I, in particular, I liked the crafting dungeon that is in the story. I think that was a nice little twist element uh, that made the crafting important but also just not like just crafting it had a purpose there was some ingenuity that had to be um involved in in making the crafting neat so I, I like that aspect of it in addition to like how the crafting ends up playing out and being important into the like the end part of the story so good stuff all around um gets a score of 7.6 out of 10 that's still orc player reborn a little pg adventure with a score of 7.6 out of 10 and next we have Villainous Life, a lit RPG supervillain novel written by Tom Warren. It is 178 pages, $3.99. It is not available on Kindle Limited. Uh, that price point's actually a little bit high, about three times of what I like to pay per page, personally. Um, here's the author's description. Miranda is an ordinary gamer who finds herself inside the body and mind of the mysterious supervillainous Murder Maid a character she created in an online role-playing game, Super City. She has none of Murder Maid's memories, but has to live with the consequences of her alto eager's actions. When she escapes from prison and tries to claim Murder Maid's old lair, she is thrust into a life-or-death battle against a vicious enemy she didn't know she had. Now she must stay alive in the brutal supervillain city of Nyx. She will make allies, level up, and try to discover what has happened to her. Is the world she remembers the real one, or the world she now experiences? So there you go. Um, this is kind of a so-so supervillain story with a minor RPG progression. That's all it really is. It's really short at 170 pages. And for um, little bit readers, that's technically more than a short story. But for little bit readers, it's, it feels like a short story. Um, and at $3.99 and not be able to it, this is not really worth it, to be honest. Um, the main character in the story is trapped in the body of a level 21 villain character she made for a video game. The fights are honestly boring. Um, and the fact that she starts at level 21 means that you're not going to see the character creation process. Um, you're not going to see how she chose her particular powers, the thought processes in, in, in that kind of arbitrary progression. Um, and that's, that's a whole loss um, on, on the story side of things. Um, a lot of the stories more revolves around the internal conflict that the main character has with being in a villain's body and dealing with the consequences of being a villain in this world, in this like fantasy world. Um, on the game mechanic side, nothing really special here. Um, if you've ever played a superhero MMO, you're going to see a lot of familiar terms and characteristics, but the game stuff really just felt awkward. Um, and again, part of that is because you're a level 21 character and you're just just describing these terms to the audience and to the main character who's supposed to have already like played for 21 levels in this game. So she shouldn't really need that explanation. Um, and the game stuff just doesn't really mesh well with the superhero stuff in my opinion. Like there are some very interesting pacing issues in that you're going to have a like combat scene. And then it feels like the action pacing just 
stops it comes to your grinding halt as like some mechanic is described or like there's some interruption there and i didn't enjoy that at all the the comet itself is only okay um and the main character one of the bigger issues is the fact that the main character doesn't feel like she's earned her powers because she's again jumping straight into level 21 and everything else kind of revolving around the story just wasn't interesting for me like i didn't care about the main character um and the story itself was just like wasn't particularly interesting, and either as a superhero story or as an RPG story. So a little bit of story, I should say. So for me, I thought it was boring. Um, give it a score of five out of ten. No technically bad writing here. Um, didn't hate it. I just thought it was boring. Uh, so it gets a five out of ten for me. That's Villainous Life, a little bit of supervillain novel with a score of five out of ten. And next we have 8-Bit Bastards Level 1, written by Joshua Mason, who you might remember from the uh, novel uh, Steam Whistle Alley. Uh, this is 224 pages, $2.99 that is available on Kindle Limited. Here's the author's description. When you've maxed out your level, done every quest, and defeated every enemy, there's not much left. So after seven centuries of immortality, Sean wants nothing more than to die. After all... Uh, after all, rather, was touted as a paradise, an afterlife where anyone could pursue their interests from archery to zookeeping. The gaming was the stuff of legend, and but for Sean, it had grown stale. But when a woman from a past life informs of a real flesh and blood descendant that has hacked his way in, Sean finds a new purpose. The AI doesn't take kind to interlopers, though, and parks the intruder in the one realm so buggy that even the oldest, most powerful denizens of after all steer clear of it. The Bit Realm. Uh, Sean must enter a land created for the original gamers, people like him who cut their teeth on some of the video games first released to the public. Will Sean brave the pixelated wilderness of Bit Realm to rescue his lost kin? Or will he fall victim to the force that has been making people vanish? One thing is for certain, he can't do it alone. He's going to need a few members of his original guild. He's going to need some 8-bit bastards. So there we go. Um, again... Yeah, I think I read the part. Okay, um, this is a good little story that starts with an interesting premise. What would you do if you had a mind, your mind uploaded to a game universe and were mortal? What about after 700 years and you learn that a distant descendant hacked his way into the game and is now trapped in the most bugged place? Um, I think that's a really good setup. Uh, and the first, I want to say half of the story is really kind of dedicated to the speculative recollection of what it's been like for the main character to have lived so long and done just about everything in this world. And then it transitions to him collecting, convincing his old teammates to help him. And it's not really till about the 40% mark in the story that you get in the RPG progression as the group enters this Minecraft 8-bit kind of world um, and get their levels reset. And then you get humorous action adventure stuff. Um, and you also get the RPG progression because they have to start at level one and choose their class. The thing I believe was level five. Um, the story is funny on several levels. I think the metagame aspect is nice. Uh, the good banter between group members was enjoyable. And there's a good slice of life adventure here. Um, the big draw, though, is going to be the interesting world building. Um, I like the speculative beginning of it, even though it's not really little bit more gamelet. Um, there's the nice ape and nostalgia that's being pulled here and the setup for what would what it would be like to be a digitalized immortal. Um, who can never really escape his mistakes. Um, I, it's actually a pretty quick read, even though it's 224 pages. It went by really fast. Like it went by, I read it in a couple hours. Um, I, and that kind of says, oh, that, I, the pacing's really good. It draws you in a story and makes you forget um, how fast you're reading it. So that's always a good point. Uh, it, it was a quick read for me. I had a good time with it overall. Gets a score of 7.4 to 10. Um, so there we go. That's 8-Bit Bastards level one with a score of 7.4 out of 10. Go check it out. And that is it, everybody. Uh, end of the show. Thank you, Frank, for hanging out with us. Remember, you can follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, on uh, YouTube, and Patreon, and our website with links in the show notes for all those different places, along with a few other groups where you can hang out with little bit authors and readers and talk about the genre and have good recommendations and fun stuff. Um, of course, if you want to support the podcast in any way, shape, or form, help keep this podcast free and free of ads, um, you can find out all the ways to do so. Support us at litrpgpodcast.com slash support. But until we can hang out again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for, for spending time with me this week. And remember to go read some old RPG. Goodbye, everybody.